Reads, Invmark launched a few days ago. Ha. <laughs> For around two hours after it released, I was king of the castle. In fact, I was king of the castle for about a year whilst I was developing and thinking, ha, nobody, ain't nobody beat my 10900K. 5.2 across all cores or 10 cores. Ain't happening. Yeah, uh, two hours after it released, somebody uploaded a 5800X result and absolutely stormed my castle, demolished the walls, knocked me off my perch. Uh, that result though, that 5800X result has since been beaten by an 11900K. Definitely didn't see that coming, <laughs> which it just goes to show, though, uh, if you watch a lot of tech journalists on YouTube, you know, who, who talk about Intel 11th gen being a complete waste of sand, being a completely useless value proposition because of how well or not well it does with regards to gaming, benchmark tests, that crunch spreadsheets and in, in extracting zip files and doing handbrake tests, right? Based on that, it's an absolute waste of time. Well, that means nothing in our world. So I'm going to be testing 11900K pretty soon. But in the meantime, after seeing that 5800X demolish my 10900K, which is my daily main PC, I had some hard questions to ask myself. And one of them was, one of them was what would Ted do? What would Ted do? What would he say? Uh, don't cook your goose, lad. <laughs> You're looking for a sprat when you should be catching a mackerel. Right. Anyway, two hours later, this happened. Yeah, it's an expensive hobby that I've got here. So after seeing the 5800X, top the leaderboard, I uh, went to Amazon straight away and I done bought one, along with an Aptua NHD15 huge air cooler, which apparently is one of the best. Now I need to find a case that that's gonna fit in. That ain't gonna be an easy job. Uh, probably got one somewhere. Anyway, that's a me problem. I'm gonna spend today doing So I'm gonna get this 5800X build done and we're gonna see how high we can get this up on the leaderboard, how it compares with everything else on there. Reads, what I've done, uh, if you follow the channel, you may remember, uh, actually I've done a couple of these videos. Back in August, 2019, I did a video called the Workstation Slayer 2.0. Uh, I haven't done one recently because you can't buy shit, mate. You can't buy anything. I'm gonna cover that in a bit. It's infuriating me what's going on at the moment with PC parts. But back in August, 2019, Workstation Slayer 2.0 was released. That build was hugely successful. Tons of people put that system together and it, it just cracked Inventor. 3D card, Fusion 360, Revit, you name it. That was a monster for Autodesk 3D card. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that build and I'm gonna put the 5800X in it. I'll say I'm gonna do it. I've already done it, mate. Here it is. And there she blows. Right, so what I've done, I've taken the 3600 out, I've put the 5800X in it, along with the Noctua D15 cooler, and you would not believe that that fits in there. It is snug as a bug in a comfy little rug, but the side panel fits on. Look at look at the clearance on that, mate. I mean, those those heat pipes are tickling the sun in the window. It's mental, right? The specs in here. If you don't follow the channel, if you haven't seen the previous builds, mate, honestly, get subscribed because I'm I'm, do, I'm going to do more of this stuff now that I've got Invmark to uh, to to test all this stuff on. But the board is an MSI B450M Gaming Plus motherboard. It's a pretty decent budget board coming in around $90 to $100 in price. Graphics card, ah, oh, you kind of goose there, but it was an RTX 2060. This was the EVGA KO version. The RAM, I'm going to experiment with RAM, but at the moment I've got Kingston HyperX in there. It's 3200 megahertz CL16 RAM, I think it is. Uh, obviously the 5800X and then the D15 cooler. Uh, the power supply is nothing special. It's um, ketchup and mustard sort of job going on there. It should do the job with an RTX 2060. Then the case is an Inwin 301. Uh, solid state driving here as well is it's NVMe. It's got full NVMe M.2 PCI Express solid state drive support. So it's a 500 gig Western Digital Blue solid state drive on that board. I'm expecting good things from this. So I'm going to do is get this rigged up, fire up Invmark, and then see how she blows. All right, it's away. It's doing its thing over there in the corner. It's a beautiful thing. Doing its dance. Just doing a five run of Invmark, and then I'll upload that to the leaderboard, and we'll interrogate the scores. We'll do a good, long, hard, at least, look at the scores and see what I mean. Oh, what a plan. It's exciting. It really, It is, for me, it's exciting how you can just take a build you did last year, which was, for me, the Workstation Slayer build, $600, take out the CPU, put something else in. That is an insane upgrade. And it just works. I mean, you need the BIOS upgrade, obviously. But the fact that it just works, same motherboard, same RAM, same everything. 
Uh, that's that's really impressive. We'll get it uploaded to the leaderboard and we'll interrogate the scores. But this is looking. It's I just I can I've been watching this for so long, right? I've been watching in Mark run for so long. I can visually tell when it's a good run and it's a good run. And was it ever a good? Was it ever a good run, mate? That is a mental score. That's going to take it roughly third or fourth place on the leaderboard. Of course, I'm going to get that uploaded. Yeah, and then we'll take a look at it on the website in two shakes of a lamb's tail. Great lad, we made it. We made it to the leaderboard. We made it to third place. Which would be super exciting if a buck hadn't come in and demolished the whole thing with his 11900K. And what the hell? Oh, oh that's not even fair. That's ah, not even fair. Once 11th gen starts making its way into the hands of consumers and gets into workstations and tier ones, 11th gen is clearly going to be at the top of the board, right? Intel is still going to be king of the castle for Autodesk and 3D CAD. Contrary to what you've, I said this earlier, contrary to what you've seen and heard in the general tech press, 11th gen is insanely good, right? Just one final point on there. Intel 11th gen, 11900K, 54,000 points on Inventor 2022. This here is my main desktop rig. This is an i9 10900K, 45,000 points. And that was that was me maxing the absolute nuts off of my system. 5.2 gigahertz across all 10 cores. Everything shut down, a 10 pass run. I could not get my 10th gen i9 to get more than 45,000 points. Buck comes in with his 11th gen and gets 54,000. It's 20% gain with 11th gen over 10th gen. Call that a waste of sand, mate. No, that's insane. That's an insane uplift. But it's not going to be cheap. Uh, and if you're looking for if you're looking for an alternative, AMD, incredible. Absolutely incredible. Uh, and it's cheaper. It is cheaper, right? The 5800X is coming in at, I paid a 380 quid for mine. It's not that far behind. So it's a, it's a uh, you know what I mean? It's a compromise. Do you want to pay a bit more for Intel? Or do you want to pay less for AMD and have a bit less performance? And it's it's only a bit less. It's only a bit less, isn't it? You can't you can't argue with these scores. You really can't. So I I pulled fifty thousand five hundred nineteen Legrand. I've been chatting to him on Discord. He pulled fifty one thousand two hundred forty six. Uh, I designed the test. I know the I know how it works. It wasn't the difference between thirty two and sixteen gigs of RAM. It's a one or two percent difference in scores. I'm, I'm guessing, it was the. I mean, look at the modeling: sixteen seventy six to sixteen seventy four. Look how close that is. Assembly: sixteen twenty two to sixteen oh five. It's looking like the majority of it was in the multi core tests, which you would think that would be down to cooling. But I've got a knock to a D fifteen on there. I'm guessing this is down to the RAM frequencies. So he's got thirty six hundred megahertz. I've got thirty two hundred megahertz. That's probably equivalent to sort of one or two percent performance uplift across all cores oh, what is what a cpu mate what a cpu let's go into the full report we're going to see epics and elites across the entire board in comparison to the 11900k so yeah these are all being compared to the 11900k which pretty much got the highest score across them all rtx 2060 graphics card here's something interesting rtx 2060 scored 2869 points on the graphics test remember that 2869 Let's take a look at somebody who had an RTX 3080. RTX 3080, graphics score, 1724. I mean, I've been banging this drum for years. I'm sure mo you know, nobody had any reason to doubt me, but that debate is now to bed, right? Okay, so the graphics card doesn't matter. If you want to build a workstation yourself, work equate to this workstation, I'll put links in the description to Amazon. They're, they're my affiliate links. So if you do buy through those links, I'll get a kickback from Amazon and a referral fee, which I'm okay with because this whole project has been a passion project so far. Uh, the entire development of this has been a passion project. Buying the 1500X yesterday was my own money to make this video just out of my own curiosity. So yeah, if you do buy it, uh, I'll get a bit of a kickback from Amazon. Just su It supports the ongoing development of this from my point of view. However, you're going to have issues with graphics cards because you may have heard it's difficult to buy graphics cards at the moment. Uh, that's an understatement. It's a joke at the moment. You can't buy them anywhere. You know, if you go to any store, there is none available, not anywhere, not a single graphics card in sight. That's going to make things tricky. So you may have to use what you've got or use the onboard graphics. I don't, I don't, think, I don't think these have got them, but 
yeah, it's not good right now. You know, for example, a- NVIDIA's 30 series, 3000 series Ampere cards have been out of stock and unavailable for 25% of their life cycle. It's a joke. So that's the 1500X coming in top of the leaderboard. But like I said, once the 11th gen start to filter the way through into the hands of consumers, they will start at top of the leaderboards, I suspect. But if you want to put yourself together a 1500X build, similar to the Workstation Slayer from 2019, uh, links are in the description. Uh, that is an incredible value proposition. Uh, and you can see already the kind of results you'll get, right? This leaderboard will show you what you will get if you buy that build. So there's no guessing, no surprises. You'll know what to expect with your performance from that build. Welcome to Mark. So happy it's out. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks for the support. Anyone who was involved with the development along the way in the beta testing, we got there in the end. Thanks very much. And I'll see you all in the next one. Oodles.